Well, good morning. It's 444. Apparently, it's minus 37 degrees outside, and I just woke up in my truck like it's a lifestyle. You guys like my new look? All smooth and clean cut. No, I didn't win a tournament, but that was more your thing than my thing, and I just kind of humored it for a while. I'm up here in Manny's neighborhood in Saskatchewan, and he was supposed to be on uncut angling today with his lovely fiance Tanya, which may not be my announcement to make, but congratulations to Manny and Tanya. Anyways, their truck heater broke, which is apparently very important when it's minus 70 degrees, so I am gonna now be on my own today, fishing for rainbows, showcasing the brand new Frostbite dinner bell. And I already know it slays, but I'm not ready yet to put it on the level of the greats, you know, the Cleos, the Castmasters, the Slender Spoons, the Flutter Nipples of the world. So, let's go see what happens. <sighs> Here we go. Otters are daisy chained. Luggage box is full. Drill. Good luck, sir. Winnipeg Jets. Okay, cameras. Go on here. <sighs> to everybody who's still thinking, oh, I don't know about those electric ice augers. What about if it's minus 40 way up north in Canada? This is the one inconvenience. You have to have the battery in your jacket, which isn't a big deal because now I'm already sweating. I don't want to pull on my auger at all. I want it to work right now. Watch this. Any questions? I'm going to drill just a few for reference. I'm going to be sight fishing probably want to end up being in like six seven feet of water and using a chisel or my actual ice saw confirm that it's hard bottom here I know there's rocks along this shore 99% of the bottom in a lake like this is gonna be soft so you find that harder bottom find rock bottom such a point of interest because it varies from what 99% of the lake bottom is so okay that's a little deep right there I'm hitting bottom and I can feel that it's rock. I'm gonna go check this far one. And that's a little shallow now. I'm gonna start working on a sight fishing hole here. So I've got a nice perimeter line of holes here. I'm gonna use the saw to just cut in between these holes. This is where you really get a good sweat. Oh yeah, my battery's dying. I gotta put this camera away so it's not frozen solid when it's time to fish. Talk to you in a second. Two hours later, the sun is up. The shack is set up. I definitely went overboard on this hole. Look at this though. Watch when I close this window. Nice rocky bottom. That is trippy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, let's get set up. Obviously I'm gonna rock the dinner bell, but maybe something with silver instead. There's the one. This is called Northern Lights, which I can't really explain. Uh, but you can see very unique spoon. It's got that blade in the center for like extra disturbance. It makes a clicking noise and it catches fish. That's for one rod. And then I'll put a completely different presentation down for the other one. I got a tungsten ice jig kit. I need to be able to see it on the camera. So I'm going to use a metallics yellow for visibility and for bait. Are you ready for this? I got worms. I beg your pardon? I know none of y'all do, but I do. Just a little juicy nugget of crawler on there. And that is absolutely scrum tralescent. I'm gonna put that down about halfway in the water column, which is a good resting place for rainbows and basically all trout in general. Okay, worms in. Now we go to work. This hole's crazy. Oh, there's a fish. There's a rainbow. Oh my goodness. He smacked the dinner bell. He is so aggressive. <laughs> 
He is just flying. I think he had it right in his mouth and I was staring at that worm. Oh, here he comes again. Oh, little guy. Wants it so bad, like so bad. Oh, now he's got the worm. Okay, first rainbow. Too easy. Shh, holy smokes. Hopefully the big ones are that dumb. Went for that spoon twice and then turned and grabbed a little tungsten jig, piece of worm. Easy, easy. Five millimeter tungsten jig. That's it. Small, subtle presentation. Let's offset the flashy spoon. It's just amazing down there. Like, that's amazing. I think it's actually beautiful. Another one. Good grief. Huh. So this is where I don't want to move it too much, but I got to keep it moving so we can't see it too, too well either. That's too easy. That is too easy and too awesome. Oh my goodness. Um, not so easy, I guess. I flat out lost him. Okay, a big one is gonna be ridiculous. Cause that wasn't a big one. And he was ridiculous. Test my drag. I think it's fine. He was just smarter than me. I mean, stronger than my line breaking strength drag setting. Oh, it's big. That's big. It's not giant. Uh, no, yeah, that, that could be giant. That could be giant. That could be big, big, big. So he swam straight up to that worm, inhaled it completely, like breathe in, breathe out. And I did move like ridiculously fast. I was gonna prick him immediately and it was already out of his mouth like a second or half a second, like ridiculous. So I'm always moving a jigging spoon. I rarely tip spoons or rattle baits with a minnow or anything. So I feel like pausing it risks losing a fish's interest. So even if it's just little hops, like with the blade in this spoon, it has so much commotion beyond just the fluttering when I'm only twitching it like a few inches like this. What am I seeing moving on the rock down there? There's like a minnow sliding so slow along the rock below my dinner bell. Maybe I can hook it. Maybe it's not a minnow. Am I crazy? Was that moving? I don't know if I can even make it out anymore. Oh, I got it. Oh, I think it's one of those caddis shucks or whatever you call it. This is legal in Canada now, eh? Maybe just one puff. One puff, maybe? So it stopped moving. Maybe it's not even in here, but this is like a reed shoot. Or like maybe they even fabricate these from small bits of plant material. You'll have to search Hank Patterson on YouTube to learn all about caddis, but... Oh, there it is. It's still here. There's a caddis larva for you folks. He drags that tube around on the bottom for protection like a snail or a crab would. And this is probably the closest thing on the planet to crack for trout. So obviously we're going to put it down on that tungsten jig instead of a night crawler because this is what Hank and other real fly fishermen would call matching the hatch. Are you actually kidding me right now? Full commitment. You gotta match the hatch, guys. I keep telling you. They lost him. Well, it's a little unsettling when they don't want anything but caddis. I don't know, dude. We caught like four deer. 60, maybe 65 fish out of here yesterday. All on caddis. Morning, caddis, afternoon, caddis, evening, caddis, 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 bam, 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 60, 70, 80 fish, right out of here. We tried everything, they, they wouldn't hit anything but caddis. They should have brought one. Well, back to using a night crawler, I guess. Look at that crazy tumble the spoon took way to the side, like there's a lot, oh, that's a big one. That's a big one, come on. Oh, come on. He wants it so bad. Did I get him? I got him. Ooh, that's a nice one. That's a really nice one. Where? No fight. No fight. No fight. So weird. Oh, come here. Big female. Unbelievable. She came at it, I don't know, three or four times. This is a sow. Like a rocket hen. These are the types that can put up the craziest fights. Oh, look at that tank. <laughs> that is a tank hen rainbow. This could be like 26 inches maybe. Let's see, mouth closed. Wow. 
26 and a half inches. Look at this. That is a big tank rainbow. I'm gonna get it right back in. Oh yeah, there she goes. Oh, oh. She did still have some energy. So realistically, I don't think I'm gonna get a bigger fish than that. 26 and a half inches is a very big rainbow for any stock trout like anywhere, basically. What I'm gonna do is this camera on my head that I wear, it's a little dorky. This is a Garmin Verb 30. It's a really nice camera. It gives a cool perspective, especially when I'm in the boat and figure eighting and stuff. It kind of follows everything I'm doing at all times. I kind of prefer it to a chest cam. I have another one here. And what I'm gonna do is I've got a waterproof case for it that I've never really used because it kind of gets condensation and stuff. What I'm gonna try and do is drop it down to the bottom but it's facing back up at me and see if I can get some undershots of the spoon and maybe some fish coming in to look at it. I'm gonna take a foot or so of line. Put it through there. There we go. We've got just a little bit of fluorocarbon there, fluorocarbon so it sinks. Otherwise, if it's mono, it's gonna float up and obscure the lens and pretty much anything else I could think of. For lanyards and stuff, seems like it'll float up and obscure the lens. Just gonna hook that. Oh! Just gonna hook that onto the dinner bell like this and then slowly lower it down. And this will forever be known as the under cam. Okay, nice and easy. Lower that down. It's on bottom. I'm just gonna flip it over onto its back. Seems like it could be okay. Jiggle that dinner bell off the tether. And hopefully I'm in business. Oh my goodness, giant, giant. I missed them. I just put the under cam in. Got him. Oh, I got a giant. I just put the undercam in. Oh, it's gonna be sick if that works. Oh my goodness. Oh, is that ever gonna be sick if that works? Are you kidding me? I just put that camera in. Oh, is this ever gonna be sick? Oh, come on. Stay pinned. Oh, he's fighting so good. Please stay pinned. Come on. Nice and easy. Put that other line there, he's gonna get tangled in. Oh, he's tangled in it. Shoot. He's tangled in my second line. This is a battle and a half. Potentially got it all captured on the under cam. I had no idea if it was gonna work. Oh, please, 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 please. Come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. Gotcha! Ring in the dinner bell instantly. This is a giant buck rainbow. Oh, you gotta see this thing. You've gotta see this thing. This could be longer than that female. This is a big boy. Oh, look at this rainbow. My goodness. That is perfect. That is a perfect specimen right there. I'm gonna guess he's probably about 27 inches. Amazing buck rainbow. Got him on the tape here. Yep, he is exactly 27 inches. Okay, and let's see if we can get a nice release here. Oh, oh yeah. You go boy, you go boy. Oh, perfect release. Still got the under cam going. I'm gonna try and retrieve that now. All I've got to retrieve it by is that one strand of fishing line. I don't think it should be too difficult. It's gonna take me longer to catch the camera than it is to catch that fish. Oh, okay, I've got it. Here it comes. Get in here. Okay, we have retrieved the under cam. It's time to see how that footage is. This could be insane. Wow, it's loud down there. You can hear all my footsteps. Well, it's not centered. But we can live with that, I guess. There's the spoon in focus. You can see my, my light on my head cam up there. Oh my goodness, there he is. He missed it the first time. This is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. Oh, got it! That's unbelievable. You can see off to the side, one of the chunks of ice. Cause I cut the big chunk in half. You can see that chunk just off to the side. That's just unbelievable. That's awesome. That's totally awesome. Okay. 
I'm gonna fish a bit longer. I'm gonna put the spotlight in. I'm gonna drill a hole through the slush here. Kind of like a little portal. Who wants a gas auger? Honestly, you crazy? Are you crazy? Okay, without the light, with the light. Portal into the other world. Oh, that's trippy. We're gonna get another cool strike? Like, that looks surreal. Oh, I just missed one. I'm trying to take a selfie and I just missed one. I'm still gonna get my selfie. So the rainbows don't care about the light either. Here comes a nice one. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, that was such a capper. Oh, that's a beauty. That is a beauty. Oh, man. This is insane. This is it, man. This is it. This day can't get any better. This is another beautiful fish. Come on, come on. Oh, jeez. Look at that rod. 38 inch medium frostbite murder. Oh, I think he's over there caught in those ice chunks. Please come over here. Come on. This is another beautiful fish. Oh, that just flicked off the ice and went slack because I have those giant ice chunks just off the side here. This is a crazy fight. He's not as big as the other two, I don't think, but he is fighting way hard. Oh no, he's giant. It's another giant. It's another giant. It's a freaking aquarium down there. Come on over. Oh, three giants in like an hour. Oh, look at the size of this one. Another just giant. Oh, come on over. Come on over. Oh, it's a beautiful hen. It's beautiful. I can see that dinner bell right in the corner of its mouth. Come on, get over here, get over here. Gotcha! Yeah, another giant! It's in the dark. I've got the spotlight on. The rainbows don't care. Look at this perfect football right there. Just not a mark on it. Perfect, beautiful fish. There's the dinner bell right in their lips. Pop that out, get a quick measurement. Oh man, that is a rocket. That is a rocket. I'm gonna guess 25 inch or so. Look at this, mouth closed, silver, beautiful, perfect rocket, 25 inch on the nose. You are very happy still, that is good to see. Looks like a steelhead, it's so perfect. Oh, she is perfect. You know you took care of them when you get a hard release like that. A happy, happy fish. Well, I'm done, but I'm gonna give you guys a tour of the inside of my shack and go over some of the tools to make this thing all work. Hope nobody in the comment box thinks that this had anything to do with them, the whole new look thing. This was the culmination of many months of nagging from my lovely mother. You're the best, Sharon. And also what put it over the edge was Jay and Sam more or less requesting it for their wedding. Everything's good. This is a landing net. There is no better fish handling while ice fishing than what you saw today with the benefit of using a net, keeping the fish in the water, keeping it happy. And this big buddy actually stopped working like an hour or two ago. And that's another thing I was gonna mention. I've got two big buddies in here. And if you're going with a friend or something that has their own big buddy, or if you have an extra big buddy, it is very nice to bring two and run them each on lower medium on opposite side of the shack, just to spread the heat around. And then in the case one goes down, it's basically a day saver to have that second big buddy heater, as is the case today. The Coda Lithium Power Pack here. And this thing is powering this entire shelter right now. I've got a ceiling fan plugged into it. I've got my cell phone charging off of it. I've got the spotlight charging off of it. I had one of my video cameras running off of there. It's also got like a built-in light on it that I use at the end of the day. I saw obviously a ceiling fan. I just got this from Canadian Tire. It's supposed to be one of those automotive ones that you put on your dash or something. So it plugs in to a USB, but at least it's metal. So it might last a bit and it was only $12. So if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. So I was using two frostbite ice fishing rods today. These are brand new models. They don't even have labeling on them because these are prototypes that I've been using over the last couple of months. Sam, Nate, myself, and the rest of the Frostbite guys have been fine tuning these models. These ones are now on the website, I believe. This is a 38 inch medium Murda. Funny name named after a funny looking guy. This is the ultimate 
walleye rod, 38 inch medium. Uh, the same blank essentially in the shorter version is the 32 inch slap shot, which is also an awesome walleye rod if you prefer a shorter length, if you're fishing in a shack or you just don't like having a longer rod. If you wanna go really light and finesse, you're probably gonna want a bit lighter of a power. And if you're gonna be bait fishing with like an iFish Pro tip up or something, you might be better off then with like a hot rod or something where you've got like a glassier action that just bends all the way down into the base. This does bend all the way down, but it's got more of a fast action meant for working jigging spoons, jigs, rattle baits, etc. So very nice rod. Yes, these are $100 custom rods made in Minnesota. And when you look at components like this, like can your guides do this? These are recoil titanium guides. They're there to prevent freezing. Like if you get ice buildup on there when you're fishing, you just give it a little flick and that just sheds off so easily and a solid carbon blank for durability that's made out of graphite that is mega sensitive. Going down to an oversized handle, this is thicker than any handle you'll find on any ice fishing rod, which is very comfortable to fish with, and it's got a custom inset slot here for getting your reel in the spot, and then using tape or elastics to secure it in place. These are probably nicer to fish with, I would say, and the cost is justified when you add up all those components, so it's just a matter of whether you wanna spend that much money on a rod, but you will appreciate it if you do invest in one at some point. And then this is a 35 inch light power rod. On the shorter model, this is the Peric Popper. On the longer model, this is called the Royal Flush. So it's 35 inch. This is good for big panfish, big crappie, big perch, and light walleye applications. Just beautiful. We're we'll working on a bunch of new lures. As you can see, the dinner bell is a massive success. If you try sight fishing, and I strongly urge you to try it because ice fishing can be kind of boring. The best part of ice fishing is watching a fish on a flasher. What's a little bit better than that is watching a fish on pan optics. What's better than that is watching a fish on your AquaView. And what's better than everything is standing over top of them and watching them swim around and interact with your baits. This is probably the best thing you can do while ice fishing. Just make sure that if you do try it, as I said before, Mark your hole out at the end of the day with some sticks or some chunks of ice or something so that somebody isn't gonna drive into this hole. Well, the day is over. We've caught plenty of fish in our giant trough. Now it's time to do the responsible thing and let snowmobilers know that there is a, a cautionary area right here in this spot. So we're gonna take this stick right there and yeah, that ought to, that ought to do it. All right, we're out of here, boys. Safety first, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Hey, YouTubers and Uncut Angling fans. Don't worry. We're going to see you real soon for March Madness. Man.